So I've recently made a trade that hasn't gone exactly as planned. And while it's never great to lose money, it's been a good learning experience. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what I've learned from this trade and how it's going to affect my trading strategy going forward. So the trade that I'm going to talk about today is a poor man's covered call on Netflix. And as the title of this video implies, I'm currently down about $18,000 on that trade. So let me catch you up to speed on how we got to this point. So if you saw my October 2021 trades I'm making video, you know that I had previously been selling poor man's covered calls on Tesla, and I ended up making a total profit of about $16,000 from those trades. But when Tesla stock rose to over $1,200 per share, it started to get a bit too risky for my taste, so I decided to look for a different stock to sell poor man's covered calls on. However, by that point, I had become accustomed, you may even say addicted, to the high premiums that a volatile stock like Tesla provided, so I knew that I wanted to trade something similar. And what I decided on was Netflix, because it's a company that I really like and believe in for the long term. And despite its high valuation at the time, it wasn't as highly valued as Tesla was, so I figured it would be a relatively safer bet. Not to mention that it met all of my criteria, meaning that it was upward trending on both a short term and a long term basis, and it showed very solid revenue growth growth quarter over quarter and year over year. Plus, it was trading around $665 per share, so I could save a bit of money by setting up a trade on Netflix rather than Tesla. So Netflix was the choice, and to set up the poor man's covered call, here's what I did. I opened the trade on October 26 by buying a January 19th, 2024 535 strike call, and that cost me $21,400 to buy. So at the time, that leaps option had a delta of around 0.76, which is a little lower than I typically go for my poor man's covered calls but not too far off. Then against that leaps option, I sold a 695 strike call expiring one week out for a premium of $210. And really until about the start of 2022, everything was fine. Until that point, Netflix was for the most part hovering between about $600 and $700 per share. So I was selling weekly calls around the $700 strike price and bringing in those same $150 to $250 premiums every single week. But in January, things started to change. And after Netflix's most recent earnings report, where they reported slowing subscriber growth relative to last year, the stock took a huge hit, falling nearly 30% in less than a week, and it's down nearly 50% from its peak of $700 per share in mid-November. So currently with Netflix trading around $370 per share, my leaps option is down in value by about $18,000, and I can only bring in about $30 per month, selling calls around the $650 strike price. Or alternatively, I could sell the January 19th, 2024 650 strike call, which is the same expiration date as my leaps option for a premium of about $2,100, which isn't bad, but it's still a long ways from making up for the losses on my leaps option. But with that said, since Netflix did perform reasonably well for the first few months of this trade, I collected a total of $1,454 worth of premium. And considering how far the stock has actually fallen, those current premiums aren't extremely terrible. But still, if I were to sell the January 2024 650 strike call for that premium of $2,100, and Netflix stock doesn't move at all from now until then, I would still be down on this trade by nearly $18,000 overall. So it would really only make sense to hold on to this trade if I expect Netflix stock to rise pretty significantly from now until January 2024. But before we get to my thoughts on that and what I plan to do with this trade going forward, let's talk about what I've learned from this trade so far and what I would do differently if I could do it all over again. Because I know many of you may be in similar situations with some of your trades. So basically the main thing I've learned is that this trade was far too risky to begin with. It's one thing to set up a poor man's covered call, which is riskier than a traditional covered call, although it can be useful in certain situations. But it's an entirely different thing to set it up on a stock like Netflix, which has a history of pretty extreme volatility, even though it is a very solid company. So really this was just a case of me getting a bit too greedy, and as most of you have probably experienced at one time or another, it's always when greed is the highest that you can get hurt the worst. So if I were setting this trade up right now, assuming that I had to set up another trade on Netflix, I would just stick with a traditional covered call. And if I couldn't afford to set up a traditional covered call, I would just avoid the stock altogether. Because when you're selling traditional covered calls, if the stock drops by say 30%, your position also drops by 30%. Whereas when you own a leaps option, as you would with a poor man's covered call, that option will fall in value much quicker than the underlying stock. In my case, as Netflix stock has fallen by about 45% since I opened the trade, my leaps option has fallen by about 85%. 
So while the poor man's covered call can be useful in order to sell calls against more expensive stocks, the trade should be reserved for more expensive stocks that are very stable. Preferably stocks in the Dow Jones Industrial Average that pay a dividend like Apple, Microsoft, and Nike. Stocks like that aren't going to fall 45% within a short period of time, or at least it's extremely unlikely that they will. But given that I'm already in this trade and the damage has been done, what's my plan from here? Well, I'll start by saying that I still do really like Netflix stock, and personally I think the magnitude of the sell-off was pretty unwarranted. The company is showing very strong revenue growth even as we're coming out of the pandemic, not to mention that it's becoming more and more profitable. So of course that, in combination with the falling stock price, have brought it to a much more reasonable valuation. So yes, subscriber growth has slowed, but that was completely expected. I mean, there's only a limited number of people out there, so the number of subscribers can't grow exponentially forever. But with that said, there is still a lot of room for growth, especially outside of the US. The streaming industry definitely isn't going anywhere. It's actually continuing to grow, and I think that Netflix is by far the strongest player. And Joseph Carlson recently did a poll on his YouTube channel asking people if they could only pick one streaming service, which one would it be? And out of over 18,000 responses, 70% chose Netflix, with the next highest being Disney Plus and HBO Max at 11% each. So there's really no other streaming service right now that I would invest in other than Netflix because it has the biggest customer base and it's just the best service in my opinion. And it seems like many other people feel the same way. So with all of that said, I plan to hold on to this trade at least until Netflix's next earnings report just to see what happens with the stock from now until then. And as I mentioned, my leaps is already down by about 85%, so I don't really have much more to lose from here. And I think there's a good chance that when the market as a whole starts to recover, Netflix will recover more strongly than most. So now if you want to see some of my other recent trades that have worked out a bit better than this one, be sure to check out that video right here. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you in that next video.